All right, so we're gonna try to have some fun with astigmatism today and kind of talk about how that can relate to a difference in prescription between the two eyes or how it can make the case of it looking like you have a difference between the two eyes, but they're not actually being one. I've got some lens examples, so we'll get to play and have some fun. I'll show you what some of those numbers look like and how they actually translate into glasses. And uh, hopefully without doing it too technically and boring you to tears, hang on tight though. There's a lot to this one. Has to be everybody's least favorite words to hear. It's technical, hang on tight. If you're still here, you actually wanna know something. So I'm gonna to try to do you justice. And for that, we have this guy here, which is a very high cylinder lens, which means it corrects for astigmatism. The way you can see that is exactly that. That shift 45 degrees changes where the power is effective and how that power looks. And this lens, these are always fun to see because they look like a donut. You put them on a flat surface, they can rock back and forth and have all sorts of fun. And yeah, that's one way to very quickly see a lens that has some cylinder correction in it. This is a spherical lens, which means that power is basically effectively the same all the way across the surface of the lens. You'll get a little bit of distortion out of the periphery. Uh, not too bad with this design though. It's actually a really good lens here, even in that large of an area. It doesn't give a lot of distortion off the periphery, but you can see the huge difference there. As I turn this lens, as long as I do it on plane, there is no shift. Of course, if I do it this way, that actually induces cylinder power, by the way, yeah, which is where compensated lenses come in. Not talking about that today. I have a pen. It's going to be fun. I'm going to point it at the camera lots. <laughs> this is what you get today. This is what you did not sign up for, but it's what you get. So the two powers I have here are minus four and a quarter spherical, which you will often see written something like this. That's backwards. This just got really complicated. That's backwards too then, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, ha. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. Something like that, but the other way around, right? Hmm, I can't write in mirror. This just got tricky. Well, anyways, the numbers line up. And then this is something you will see typically for an astigmatism correction, effectively three numbers here. It doesn't really matter what those numbers are, but there'll be a plus or a minus sign here, plus or a minus sign here, and then another number out here by itself. This uh, typically will be a minus sign, but there are still some doctors out there that use a plus cylinder there. Usually ophthalmologists, for whatever reason, don't follow our rules and they have a plus cylinder. There's some reasons that's not technically correct anymore, but don't worry about that because the numbers change and it all makes sense in the end. What I do want you to take away from this, unfortunately, now that it's mirrored, that's going to bug me. But let's say I'm going to make the numbers nice and round here. So let's say we've got that plus one minus four. I did minus 375 because that's what the lens over here is staring at me that I had twisted around all kind of fun earlier. So the way this works out is you can do a spherical equivalent calculation, which is going to tell you basically you've got this plus one minus four. You can take half of this, add it over here, subtract in this case. So you subtract your minus two from your plus one and you have what is a spherical equivalent of net minus one, which is fairly close to what's in here. Uh, and that is why sometimes you can have a prescription that has a plus in front of it on the very first number on that sphere number, and the other eye has a minus in front of it, and they're still actually the same once you balance that cylinder correction in there. Now, don't take this to mean that you can just take half that number and it's gonna tell you really what the prescription is in your lenses because that's not entirely true either. Some of that's to do with the distances away from the eye. Some of that's to do with how it actually is made into the lenses and helps you see. More importantly, that last bit, 
you can do these spherical equivalent calculations for certain cases where it actually helps. Typically, that's going to be more seen in contacts than it is in glasses. Uh, trying not to do this too complex. Light, airy, and fun. Hmm. Now, we're going to do this a little bit differently. So we've got that same minus, uh, plus one, minus four. We're going to add a degree annotation in there. So we've got our new powers, plus one, minus four at 180. You can tell I don't like doing a lot of editing, right? Because I'm writing this down and holding up paper. And I'm going to ramble on for 50 minutes about this. Now, the way that actually works out is we can do a lens cross which is getting a little more technical than I would really like to. And it's gonna look something like this. And if my brain were working properly, I would assign the proper powers to the proper places and tell you exactly how that works. And yeah, let's do that. So the way that works is at 180, we have our plus one sphere is what's active. So across that 180 degrees is a plus one power lens. At 90 degrees, all of that cylinder power is in effect, which means at 90 degrees, that lens is actually a minus three because we have a minus four. We add that with the plus one, which leaves minus three. All the powers in between here are kind of exactly that. They're in between these two numbers. That's going to be based on the exact radii, and there's more math for that. We're not getting that complex today. It's a basic concept of why sometimes it can look like you have different prescriptions in the eyes, and most people do. They're going to be subtly different, but occasionally you can wind up with one that looks way different, where say maybe it's the plus a quarter and minus a quarter, but with the cylinder factored in, you're actually in that same area, and both eyes are slightly minus. I actually came up recently. That's why I'm talking about this. And that's why it matters. Now, if you want to really have some fun with it, you can dial it in and play with all of the numbers of the different degrees. So it just basically does that. Parts of that cylinder power are in effect all the way around this. That's how you get this donut looking thing here. It does really weird things to light. And just to be fair, I'm going to spin this one exactly on plane, so you can see that versus that. And it's really fun because you can actually pick a pair of glasses and really quick figure out kind of what's going on with them if you know what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that left eye has a little bit of cylinder in it, and that's very hard to pick up on camera because it is so small. But yeah, hopefully that helps a little bit or it confused you more. Could be that one. But I had fun with it. It's a nice little concept. Opticians should understand that extremely well because what it amounts to in these cases where you've got kind of extreme cylinder amounts, you can really visualize what that lens thickness is gonna be in the different places across the lens. That's what I use it for on a pretty regular basis, in fact, most any lens I'm calculating out to try and have an idea of what it's going to look like in the final pair of glasses. Because cosmetics matter too, uh, and I'm a stickler for that, at least with the glasses I'm making. That's some really fun ones over there. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that another time. For now, that's all I've got. Let me know your questions. I'm sure there will be many, so drop them down below. I'll happily answer everything I can, or make another video about those questions. That's always fun. Catch you guys next time.